Hello there. Hey, uh, let's talk about batteries. Well, actually not batteries, but battery related. You know what this is here? This is a DC power strip. Uh, this has been available for a long time on my website, jack35.com, but it has been available in a kit form, right? So that means you get the PCB and then you get all these connectors and you gotta like solder them yourself. Now that's cool. A lot of people have used it. I mean, yeah, we've sold uh, a ton of them and uh, people are using them. But I, as I move forward, I've been trying really hard to get things so they're easier for you guys to build battery projects, right? And so all the products that I've been offering for a long time in kit form so that you can populate yourself, now I'm starting to offer them populated we're doing this in-house we tried china and they let us down we tried several places and there was always quality issues there were shipping times issues there's it's just a nightmare right so we had to move this uh in-house and now that i got this place here i'm able to do this in-house and so now we're starting to you know uh be able to offer these so let's look at it i want to do a test because the thing is uh these are cool uh just a little bit of background what it is it's basically a power strip but it's a dc power strip it's so that you can combine a bunch of batteries that have the xt60 uh female connector there's a lot of these batteries uh the original ones that we got were the scooter batteries right uh and those are the hoverboard batteries and so in order to, for you to use a bunch of these in bigger battery systems, like most of us want to build, right? We, we, we kind of, you know, we have a community of people that want to build uh, large batteries called DIY or power walls, right? So that you can power your entire building or your house or, you know, something big, like a big charger electric car or your golf cart or all that stuff. So you want to combine a bunch of smaller batteries into one bigger battery. And in order to do that, this thing will help you here because it allows you to put 10 of the smaller batteries into one bigger one, right? So then you put all, you connect them right here and then uh, then the output is, is this one, which is a bigger connector. So let's test it. I wanna test how much you can plug it, uh, how much power you can run through it and at what temperatures you'll, you'll see, right? So let's look at my setup that I have over there. It's already connected and everything. All right, here is my setup, right? Here are uh, scooter batteries, right? There's uh, eight of them. Each one of these batteries right here is 10S, so about 37, 30, yeah, 37 uh, volts uh, nominal, 42 fully charged. Right now they're at 34, so they're actually, you know, kind of not fully charged. I've been running them down. Um, here's the... Uh, DC power strip, right? So I have connected eight of these in here and then two output. There's the one pigtail here and then there's another one on this side. This could be used to put another uh, power strip over here and then connect one to the other or you can use it like this to uh, as an output, right? So both of them. So I have been running this for a little while and these are grid tie inverters. They're connected to two different uh, uh, what is it, legs of my service here, my AC service, right? So two different circuits. And so each one of these is putting out 600 watts. That at the current voltage of the batteries, which is 34.59 volts is about 40 amps, right? So at 40 amps, they've been running around for a little while. Uh, what does this say, 26 or 26 minutes? Really, I guess I've... I've had them on for 26 minutes. I wanted to do that and run them for a little while so that we can, it will have time to warm up and, and heat up or whatever, get to the right temperature it's gonna get. Now let's put the thermal camera and see what temperature is running right now. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me step a little bit further. As you can see, the inverters are warm. Uh, 38C there. Right, the cables are about 37. The batteries are cool. These batteries are amazing. They can put out each one about 20 amps. So there's plenty, there's, there's you know, about 150 amp capable here, but we're only pulling about 43 right now. So at that, 
yeah see look at that it's at an ambient temperature essentially right so right about on this edge over here 36 c right now the table it's a 28 okay so it is a few degrees higher what is 28 35 so that's like six degrees celsius above ambient temperature so it's warm it's uh yeah you with when you put your finger in here it's you can barely feel it okay let's crank this up let's crank it up to see where the thermal uh limit of this guy is there right okay so the beauty about these guys is that they have a built-in limiter and it, you can have an external limiter that you can limit according to a load so that it can match it so that you can essentially cancel it out or you can go in here into the menu of this guy right here uh is it that one let's see i think is this guy come on okay so here we go we go to this guy so right about here is where you input the limit i have them set at 20 amps limit right here i'm gonna i'm gonna increase that so you click that up like here. I'm going to go to, right? So if we go to 30, then it tells you to confirm if you indeed want to do that. There we go. And this one stops. It's going to go down to 20 amps, but then it's going to kick right back up. Here we go on the fan started. So now it's 625. Oh. Okay, so it went all the way to 925 watts, which means that this is now being loaded at 55 amps. Okay, so now we just increased that and the voltage is 34. I guess we have enough time to have this running for a little while because before the batteries run out and then I'll have to charge them. So let's do the same thing on this guy. All right, so here we go. They've been running for a little while. Uh, here's the whole setup. Uh, the cables are about 38. Those are 10 gauge, American wire gauge cables, right? We're running 65 amps through the yeah power strip there. And look at that, the power strip remains cool. 12 degrees above ambient there, right? Um, that's still not very hot. That's, you know, that's just warm, basically. And of course, the longer this will run, then the, the warmer it will get. But it's been running now for a few minutes, 35 minutes from the beginning of this test. Uh, and it was running continuously with 40 amps and now it's running with 65 amps. So there we go, we're getting 37 over here 30 38 almost 40 degrees over here yeah all right now i've set up three of these uh inverters uh two are set to full power and then one of them is set to 600 which then equals 80 yeah it's, you know it's around 80 amps so right now this pcb uh, DC power strip is seeing the full 80. Let's look at it thermally now. All right, here we go. Ooh, those cables are hot now and the batteries are hot. Okay, so the battery, the cables are, are at 50. Ooh, that connector right there is at 64C. That connector in particular uh, is seeing about 50 amps. So yeah, these cables are about 60C. There we go. So those these 10 amp, uh, 10 gauge cables, they need to, obviously we need to get bigger ones. Uh, but for this test, it'll do. So here we go. The So the board right here is at 61 degrees and that's the hottest spot on the board 
Not really sure why it's getting a hot spot there. Oh, well, I kind of do. It's because that's where the uh, that's where the 50 amp is coming out. And then on the other one is 30 amps. Let's switch that around and see if we can get a hot spot to go on this side. Uh, let's do that now. Okay, now it's been a few minutes. I rewire the thing so that the 50 amps are coming off of this side here. Hmm, for some reason, this side over here can handle more than this side. The, this thing's still showing kind of a hot spot. 47 degrees over here with 30 amps. And on this side, it's 46 degrees with 50 amps. I don't know why that is. Huh, that's interesting there. Let's change that and with another one and see if we can recreate that. All right, here we go. 10 minutes running with a new, I've replaced the, the uh, strip, right? The PCB, the DC PCB um, power strip. And let's see now, this side is getting about 32 amps and it's at 50 C. This side over here, oh yes, this side is getting 50 amps. What does it say right now? Yeah, 52 amps. And it's uh, at about 70 degrees C. So now it's better. I don't know. Uh, there's a there's a 20 degree difference, and there is about a 20 amp <laughs> difference between this side of the board and that side of the board. So that's where stuff starts getting dicey for me, right? I'd say you can run it at this. You can run 80 amps continuous, and it won't go past this voltage. 70 degrees C, that's that's a bit hot, right? Um, of course, if you were to split the 80 amps evenly, 40 on this side and 40 on this side, then it wouldn't get this hot. It would be probably somewhere around 60 degrees on both sides. And about 60 degrees Celsius, That I'd say that's about safe to run a PCB on a continuous basis. Anything more than that, then you start running into trouble. Uh, you, of course, you could put another uh, input or output out of out of the same PCB and then you'll be able to get more out of that. There's also another trick where you can add a second PCB to this one on the bottom. Um, and in fact, I will uh, offer some of those available in the future. Um, but there you go, here's the test. So there you go, if you're building large battery systems out of small batteries packs like these you might have a need for a splitter not a splitter a power strip right and so one of these might be very useful for you um, especially if the packs already have the xd60 as many many packs out there in the market do right so there you go. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. And always remember that these all these products here are available at jack35.com. So there you go. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.